Well, Todd, welcome back to Super Chat. Good morning, Gary. Thanks for having me. Well, you're very welcome. I always enjoy our conversations. Let me jump right into this. You know, as we've been reporting each month to your stakeholders, I was wondering if you could provide our listeners with an update on the very latest status regarding your master facility plan for Northwest local schools. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak about that because about right now, after passing the bond issue, you're like, when are we going to break ground? When are the big machinery coming in? So on and so forth. So I'd like to give them an update on that. Right now, we are currently in the middle of applying for the OFCC collaboration that will allow us to get ELP credit. And what that means is Ohio Facility School Commission, um, OFSC, has a process where schools enroll and you wait for your number to come up. And when that number comes up, the OSFC will pay a certain amount or a certain percentage on your project. So we passed our bond for $86 million. We know that the state... For any credit we build up, we can pull 22% off of there, and that's what we qualify for as a district. So we're in the process of filling out their application. They're meeting with us. We're also also trying to time up our acquiring a design-build contractor. So what that involves is um, we had three firms apply and go through an interview process. We are now looking at their proposals that they have handed in. And we are using using a rating system from the OSFC, follows Ohio Revised Code, to come up with our choice for design build contractor. Um, so once we get this in place, then we get back to designing for the future. So then we will involve parents, teachers, community members in the process of the overall design of the building. So that part takes a little bit of time. We hope to have the design build contractor chosen by the March 21st um, board meeting, but the latest would be the April 4th board meeting. Still looking at constructing this summer. Um, The only thing that has changed from when we originally went out for the bond issue, as I I talked about last month, was we are looking at different sites. Um, And if we can move some of our buildings around and sell some of our current sites, we can raise more money with the overall goal of building a K through eight campus for Colrain and Colrain L and Colrain Mill and doing that without going back for a bond. In order for that to happen, we are looking at a different site for the Struble Weigel New School, and that is the Mercy Hospital site um, at the corner of Banning and Pippin Road. And what we're trying to do is uh, negotiate there with Powell Crosley, who owns the property, um, someone known well in the Cincinnati community and seeing if we can get the possibility of having that land as a choice to put the new school. Now, obviously, if this is going to go through, um, we are going to conduct nightly meetings at both Struble Elementary and Weigel Elementary and gather input from the parents. Where the Struble location is, um, the township is going to close John Rose, so there will not be an exit out of that facility to Colerain Avenue. So what that does is it has traffic coming out one way out of the front of John Rose. Now, we are looking at options on the backside of Struble. Um, We can put a bridge out of the backside of the property where buses only would go out of there, but we have to negotiate with the township and the property owners to make that happen. Part of the problem there is that bridge to go over there at our first initial price is about $150,000. So that can be a little bit expensive. Didn't know it from the get-go, though, when we planned all this. But again, if we can find another piece of property like the Mercy site that is open, has two um, alternate exits, is easy in and out for the crews, and might actually save us some money, then that's why we're looking at it. But we are also very concerned about the Struble folks. I mean, those people, that's their community. We don't want to leave an empty piece of property there. So we are working with developers to see what can go in there, whether it becomes athletic fields for our youth organizations to use, or if it comes to other developers who might want to put homes or um, senior retirement centers. We're looking at all those options, but we just want everybody to be aware. That's why we're looking at a different site. It's not that it's going to happen, but we just want everybody to be aware that it might happen. And that's the important piece of going out to our parents and we'll set up those meetings in the next week or so. Yeah, of course. And uh, as we uh, talk month to month, I think it's a good idea to just keep these uh, monthly updates uh, as a part of a a integral part of our show. 
Well, let me change directions uh, a little bit on you there, Todd. The state of Ohio releases uh, what I'll just call rep- report card data on each school district and school. And, and I was wondering if you could report on the results of that for our listeners. Uh, what, what can you tell them? Yeah, I'd be glad to, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, the state of Ohio just released the second set of data um, last Thursday, the 25th. What this data does is it looks at student achievement, gap closing, K-3 through literacy, progress overall, graduation rate. And um, we know from last year, that was the PARC test, which was given by the state, that that test is no longer in existence. There was issues between how long the test took. Students were testing from one and a half to three months. So you, you were spending a lot of time as a school testing. They found out that most of the tests did not run equal and that some of the tests stopped when they weren't supposed to in the middle of testing. So the information coming from it, and if you if you look at an article in the Columbus Dispatch that I sent out to our parents and put on our website, Senator Peggy Lehner basically said the data we got from last year's test is absolutely useless. We're moving on. We're going to the air test. Um, so she warned parents not to be too upset depending on what the data is because it wasn't accurate. One of the things that was really urgent or important to us is students and parents had the options to opt out last year, and they do this year. But last year, for example, at White Oak Middle School, we had 72 kids opt out of taking the test. Well, we're not even getting true results of all our students. We're being affected by other scores coming in that weren't even used for us. So when we look at our data, we did better in some areas, and we'll celebrate those successes. For example, our performance index was a C and stayed a C. Our K-3 through literacy improved tremendously from an F to a C. Our graduation rate for our two high schools, we have Northwest High School and Colerain High School. Our four-year graduation rate stayed a C. Our five-year graduation rate went from a C to a B. And if you want to talk about one individual school's results that really improved and that we're really proud of, and that's White Oak Middle School. Value added is your school's average progress for its students in math, reading, grades six, seven, and eight. It looks at how much each student learns in a year, and did the students grow a year's worth of growth? Did they get more or did they get less? And White Oak Middle School went from a value added of an F to an A. They also got a value added of a C in gifted, students with disabilities a B, and lowest 20% achievement a B. So that is outstanding which shows that not only did they make up a year's growth, but they improved, brought more growth that they lost the year before. So they're really doing some good things at White Oak Middle School. So as you look at some of our other schools, their overall value added, we're Fs, Ds. Are we happy with that? No, but we are in the process of putting things in place um, that will assist our teachers using a data-driven approach that can change the way we deliver instruction. We're not just talking about the students at the low end or high end, we're talking about both. Um, We're a very transient district. About 28% of our population turns over every year. So if you've got a a thousand students in one school, about 250 of those students are new each year because of our transient population. So we have to put things in place that help us attack these interventions that are needed. And for our, our upper kids, we don't want them sitting in a class and waiting for everybody else to catch up. We want them to go ahead. We want them to be enriched. So we're working on both ends of the spectrum. I think our teachers, some of them, I don't want them to get too disappointed in what this test shows because we have hardworking teachers. Um, That's not the issue here. Our our teachers stay late. They come in early. We just need to work smarter. We need to use our data to drive our decisions, and we need to reallot our budgets so they're supporting what's working. Uh, We have a great model in White Oak Middle School. We don't have to go look anywhere else. We're seeing within our own district of three middle schools, we've got one doing it, and it's having success. That's what we need to model at the rest, and we will. But we have a lot of good things at these other schools going on, and we will continue to support and push, and we will get where we need to be. Yeah. Well, this movement from the uh, park assessment, which kind of fell apart, uh, not just in Ohio but elsewhere as well, the move to the air, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is going to reduce the test time considerably, right? Correct. Last year we were testing at the uh, beginning of February and almost through May. This year, that's not the fact. Um, we will start testing into March, into April, 
cuts the time down a third of what it used to be. Uh, the results are more accurate. We'll get the results back. That was the other thing with Park. We didn't get the results back to about nine months after we took the test. We couldn't even use it to align or design instructions. So that data was absolutely useless. The air will be more efficient. Uh, it'll get back to us and we can actually use it to drive what we're doing. No, that makes perfect sense, and we have seen this in um, other jurisdictions where the teachers really don't have the information that they're supposed to have in, a, in even close to a timely manner. So how can they adjust their instruction? You're absolutely right. Well, hopefully once they settle in to adapting standards to uh, this air test, things will begin to settle a little bit for them, and they'll be able to focus. But, you know, the one school that you mentioned, uh, to have a 25% turnover rate every year, that's quite significant, and it's a different dynamic to have to deal with every year. I'm sure the the teachers in the administrative uh, staff at that school, uh, they're familiar with what's up and do the very best they can to adapt to it and uh, to bring it into line. But, you know, th these are all being driven by these data-driven models that we see in uh, many, many schools that we uh, speak with. It sounds like they've made some good changes, some good moves, and it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, next year looks uh, in the year after that, because it does take time to adapt to these new models. Um, am I the least bit out of line on that? No, and I mean, you hope that the new air test will resemble resemble the park test in terms of same vocabulary, same types of question, multiple choice, true, false, short and extended response. But you have to get a feel for what it is. And then on top of that, it was the first time a test has been put on technology. And that's new for kids. You, you've got little ones trying to maneuver a mouse and, and get things in the right area and not click on the wrong thing. I mean, there was a lot of things that were new. Um, so we will adjust. We will move forward. But a lot of things we couldn't control. And, and overall, if you look at what White Oak did and some of our other schools are doing currently with their map data, we've really got some schools moving in the right direction. And we will get there. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, well, Todd, it is that time uh, when parents of uh, K-8 students need to pick a school, hey. Yeah, the, the basic thing that I'm talking about here is, is our community is very unique. We have a lot of public schools within the Northwest Oakville School District, and then we have a lot of parochial schools. A lot of them are K-8 through feeders, and, and then we have a high school. And so it becomes that time of year when parents who have seen their kids go through a K through eight, whether it be parochial or public, make a decision on where they want their kids to go to high school. I want our parents to know that, you know, we are just as competitive as anywhere else. And your tax dollars are already paying for our education. So to get enrolled in our school doesn't cost you a thing. But I want you to know if you're worried about something you're hearing, don't believe what you hear until you come and see it in person. We have great things going on at both our high schools. At any time, you can call an administrator at either high school. They will hook you up with a counselor. Your son or daughter is more than welcome to shadow one of our current students in our nine through 12 buildings. Um, the parents can come in and take tours. We will accommodate um, these folks any way we can. We just want people to know that we have good things going on out there and we are doing some great things with our students. We offer AP classes. We offer college credit plus classes. And I want to remind parents that that's you enroll in a high school class, but you receive college credit. And then these transfer to college. Um, they're in place. Um, we're expanding how many we offer. Um, we also offer a career pathway through Butler Tech, which has a large variety of assorted classes that students can enroll in. And these classes also lead to college through a two years associate degree or a four year bachelor's degree. So I just want folks to know that we are competitive. We will put what we give our students on the table against any other school in the state and much less in our school district. And if parents don't think they have the same ability to come and see our schools as they do other parochials, you are more than welcome anytime. Feel free to come with their son or daughter or send their son or daughter to shadow another student. But we will be glad to set this up. There's the open door, folks. Yeah, Gary, if I could say one more thing, our thoughts and prayers are going out to Madison High School today. There was a, a shooting um, at Madison High School. So um, anybody who works in education, you always worry about this and do the most you can to protect your kids. But just like to let them know that they are in our thoughts and prayers and we wish them nothing to, but the best as they get through this situation. Wow. Yes, you're absolutely right. 
Todd, good conversation today. Important topics uh, for sure. And uh, hey, I want to thank you for joining me once again this month on Super Chat. (music) 